Welcome. We're, uh, we've been invited to uh, La Crepe Dia Marina in beautiful downtown Florida to show you waves and vibrations. Now, waves are a method by which energy travels. And generally what you see is like lots of different combinations of waves of different periods, different spaces between the waves, different wavelengths, different times it takes them to cross. If you look up, look up at the sky, I don't know if you can see this or not, these clouds here have a definite pattern. What it is, it's a combination of different waves. The waves come off from the left, they come off of the Olympics. As they come off the Olympics, the air, the air rises up over the Olympic mountains and comes down and crashes and as it goes up, air clouds, uh, water condenses out. And as it comes down, the water evaporates again. So you see different, uh, different waves. Now, but it's a combination of different periods because the Olympics aren't one solid barrier. They're broken up a little bit. So quite often what we see are mixtures of waves. If you look out here on the water, you'll see that there are lots of different waves. There are lots of different caps. But if you look down here, you notice there are some you can see coming towards us. There's a wave about, oh, about six feet. And you can see it moving right now. You can even hear it. But you notice that there are lots of other ways sitting on top of that. So what we need to do is we need to figure out a way to break these waves down. We need to talk about the basics of each wave and show how you can simply add waves through a process called superposition, which means adding waves, uh, to get what we see in nature. So let's talk about waves in general. Now this is a standard wave. I'm going to draw a vertical line here, and we'll look at distance. So we're just looking at the wave, we're traveling with the wave. And this is a simple harmonic, harmonic wave. And this is called displacement, because you know when the water is not doesn't have a wave on it, it's flat, it's still. It's all right here. But if you displace the wave, you get a, if you displace the water, you get a wave, and it looks something like this. And a simple harmonic wave only has one period, one time, or one wavelength. How's that? The distance between, the distance for one cycle is called the wavelength. And it's typically given by this Greek letter, lambda. Okay, so lambda. And that can be in meters or feet or inches or yards or miles. Now, the displacement is called the amplitude. The maximum displacement, excuse me, the maximum displacement is the amplitude. So that's the amplitude right there. That's also the amplitude right there, because waves are symmetric. This is called a sine wave, S-I-N-E. A is the amplitude. All right. So that gives you, if you're traveling with the wave, that tells you a lot of what you need to know about the wave. How big is it? How big does it get? How long is each cycle? All right. The points where there's no displacement, that's called, they're called nodes. And the point where you have maximum displacement, that's called the antinode, a relative of the node. Now, if I'm not moving with the wave, if I'm watching the wave move by me, then I wouldn't plot it versus distance, I'd plot it versus time just like what we were doing a moment ago. If I'm looking in time, I've got the same plot of displacement. But now I'm going to plot it versus time. The amplitude's still the same. 
distance between here. This isn't a time. This is a time now. It's like I'm watching the waves go by, and I watch a peak go by, and then I wait, and I watch another peak go by, and the time it takes for each peak to go by is the cycle. Oh, excuse me, is the period of the cycle. So T is a period. Usually it's in seconds, but it can be minutes or hours or days, or in the case of uh, the planet Earth around the sun, a year. So time per cycle. What else should I tell you about this? Oh, we can combine these. I mean, if we look out here, we see that you can see that these waves are moving at a certain speed. You can see them coming by here. And I can figure out by looking at them, by seeing what the size of the wave is and figuring out the period of the wave, I can figure out how fast they're going. The relation is that the, the speed is the, is the wavelength divided by the period. So let's see, let's look at these waves. They're, uh, let's see, they're about uh, six feet across. And if I watch them coming by, Six foot waves. I'm gonna go. One, two, Man, these are some slow waves. So about it looks like about it takes four seconds for that six foot wave to cross for one full cycle. So V is the wave velocity, the speed of the wave. And the velocity is just the wavelength, the size of the wave, divided by the wave period. Uh, in this case, it was, um, let's see, the size of the wave was six feet. And it took four seconds for one cycle to pass me by. And so we get a wave speed. It's going to be about one and a half feet per second. All right. Another way to look at this is frequency is the inverse of period. Now. Let's see, if period is like seconds per cycle, you flip that over, the units of frequency would be cycles per second. And a cycle per second is a hertz. So we could also write this equation for the speed of a wave, given that frequency is one over the period. We could say, all right, let's see, the velocity instead of one over the period, the frequency is equal to frequency times wavelength. So just knowing the wavelength, uh, knowing the period, we can figure out the velocity of the traveling wave. This is purely for a simple harmonic wave. And all these complex waves, complex waves, like I said, they're just lots of different simple harmonic waves added together to produce a new type of wave. Now we should talk about how you make such waves. And to make a to make a simple harmonic wave, you have to have something that generates these waves and something that exhibits something called simple harmonic motion. Nice waves, huh? This is more of a simple harmonic wave. Notice the waves are about, oh, about 10 feet apart. That's the wavelength, the distance between the peaks. And notice that they're moving at a certain speed. Well, I can hear, listen. about a second apart. So they're hitting, the peaks are hitting the bulkhead about a second apart. So that means uh, the period of the wave is about one second and the wavelength is about 10 feet. Velocity is wavelength divided by period. So 10 feet in one second. These waves are moving about 10 feet per second.